This slide shows the pictures of the pre-stressing systems. There are two types of pre-stressing method, which are pre-tensioning and post-tensioning. The pre-stressing operations require an appropriate tensioning bed for the precast element, bolt head at both ends to anchor the individual strengths, and forward for precast concrete element. The picture here shows a typical pre-tensioning bed which is often carried out in the factory environment with the advantages of quality control and mass production. The pre-tensioning of the strand can be achieved by stressing the multiple strand or wires simultaneously or by stressing each strand or wire individually. The figure here shows the multi-strand pre-tensioning and this shows the single-strand pre-tensioning. There are two hydraulic jacks at both sides and all the strands here are being pre-stressed at the same time. The hydraulic jack here is operated by pumping oil under pressure into a piston device that causes elongations of the tendon and the increase of the tension in the tendon. The system is normally equipped with some load cells in order to monitor the pre-tensioning loads. The typical procedures of the pre-tensionings are laying out the pre-tensioning beds with the strengths, close up the formwork small, stressing the tendon, pouring the concrete for casting, and lastly, when the concrete reaches to its transfer strength, the loads from the strand is transferred to the concrete by allowing the jack to gradually retract. Then the load is transferred to the concrete member. After that, the strands are being cut and the fabrications of the pre-tension member has been completed. The post-tensioning system is shown in the picture here. The process is basically laying the ducting for pre-stressing tendons later, having the formwork ready, as well as the reinforcement bar required, casting the members and applying the pre-stressing forces to the tendon. The post-tensioning method will require the corrugated metal duct or plastic duct. It is for the insertions of the tendons which will later be jacked against the concrete element. It also requires the anchorage and hydraulic jack to impose the pre-stressing force and to retain the force within the member. The duct are typically arranged at the intended profile, normally in the form of the curvature, which is specially designed to counterbalance the external force acting on the member. And there are anchors at both ends of the member. One of the ends is dead end anchorage, while another end will be live end anchorage. The live end anchorage is the end where pre-stressing force is applied by the hydraulic jack. The grout vent here provided is for the pouring of the grout or pumping of the grout from one end, allowing air to discharge from another. It is used to ensure that the wet grout completely fill the duct during the grouting operation. The picture here shows the hydraulic jack used for stressing multi-strand and individual strand. 
This picture shows the typical pre-stressing the black duck. And this shows the live end anchorage for the flat duck tendon. This picture shows the pre-stressing process of the tendon. The live end of a slap tendon before post-tensioning is shown here. The wedges here is used to clamp the strand to prevent the slippage of the strand into the post-tensioning element. It is a common practice to pen the strand before the post-tensioning. It is so that the elongations of the strand can be readily measured after the stressing operations. After jacking, the post-tension strands are anchored by the wedges in the anchorage head and the load is transferred from the jack to the structure through the anchor casting or bearing plates. This picture shows the dead-end anchorage, which are normally embedded or sealed in the post-tension member. The typical multi-strand tendon anchorage are shown here. Each of these will anchor a strand in the duct. The figure here shows the typical procedures for the installations of the post-tensioning member. First, install the anchorage before pre-stressing. Use the jack to stress the tendon. After that, the tendons are being cut off. Sometimes, tendon coupler and intermediate anchorage can be used to connect tendons within a member. These are some examples of the tendon coupler and intermediate anchorage. It is basically designed to connect two tendons together. The picture here shows the ground band and the caps. This is very important as the success of grouting operations depends on many factors including the correct placement of the grout vent for the injections of the grout and also for expelling the air in the duct as the grout outlets. The grout is normally injected into the duct at the tendon end or the anchorage point of the tendon and the vents are normally placed at high points of the tendon profile to allow air and water to be removed from the duct. When the grout emits from the vent at the far end of the duct, it means that the duct is completely filled with grout. In some design, external tendon may be applied. In this case, the tendons are exposed. It is not embedded in the concrete and there will be some mechanism to ensure the tendons and the concrete elements are intact.